Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of On The Mic with Michael Flicks. Very happy to be back. This one's a little different. I think this is the first time I've had my guests from start to finish. Usually I start, do a little like between like 15 and 30, maybe 30 minutes by myself and then I bring the guests in. This is the first time I've had the guests from beginning. Lorenzo Keeler came in and he was the majority of the interview, but this is the first time from start to finish. My guy, my brother, my little bro, AJ, how you doing, man? AJ Bergen, how you doing, bro? Stuff, you know, just getting by day by day. I feel you, man. Dealing with this corona stuff and, and you know, not being in school, it should, should be your senior year of high school right yeah. now. What you been up to, man? Uh, each day is kind of more or less the same. Mm-hmm. Wake up, like, right when school starts, log in on the Zoom, get through my two classes, and then, like, at 12.50, I'll go up to the gym, get some weights, and then, depending on the day, I'll either do a hill workout with Joe Seals. Uh, I'm missing those. Those like Wednesdays, Fridays. Mm-hmm. Today I got game point practice, but like just try to change it up mm-hmm. so like it's not as routine, but still the same. You said just two. You only have two classes. Yeah. Well, so this year our school we switched to quarter system. Mm-hmm. So normally we have eight classes throughout the whole two semesters, and like four classes each day on a block schedule. Mm-hmm. This okay. time I don't know why they did it, but we have four classes. Four different classes each semester. Mm-hmm. So we have two classes each day mm-hmm. on an A B schedule. Mm-hmm. So today I had AVID, which is like college readiness, and uh, like another uh, like a support class, IB mm-hmm. support. Mm-hmm. And then tomorrow is my ha- uh, harder classes. It's IB history. It's like about revolutions and uh, AP calculus, which is so hard. I was about to say that. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. Would, would the schedule still be that way if it were like? If school was normal? No. Nah, okay, so it's just uh, like for, for Zoom. Yeah. So okay. So like now we have just two hour and a half classes mm-hmm. each day uh, in class or in school. We'd have four hour and a half classes. Okay. Yeah. Mentally, how have you been dealing with that? Because I know like most and especially athlete. I mean, every high school student looks forward to their senior year, but especially mm-hmm. like an athlete, you know, it's your senior year, last year to play ball at your school. How have you been dealing with, you know, not really having the senior year that you imagine you'd have? Mm. Or have you not really given much thought? Haven't really got, given much thought. Mm-hmm. You know, just kind of putting it aside. Like mm-hmm. it happens. Not much we can really do about it now. Just like trying to get ready if there is a season, mm-hmm. which I hope there is. Mm-hmm. But I'm just doing all I can right now. Mm-hmm. And how and how is that? You said if there is a season, you guys are just kind of playing that by ear, waiting to hear from your coach. Or yeah, I mean, like we're kind of in purple tier now. Mm-hmm. We moved, right, right, right. Moved into that, so everything's like nothing is guaranteed. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone like they moved the uh, season to March, and like with the hopes that in 2021 something like new will happen but mm-hmm. it's just like it's just a new year i think so i think it'll happen they're talking about now like shutting everything down for six weeks like what, like we should have mm-hmm. done from the very beginning but i think if we do that once and maybe even twice i think we'll be good enough at least to like yeah because the way i said i was just talking to somebody the other day i think the smart way to do it is to obviously do it with no fans uh-huh. and give every player four to five tickets per game uh-huh. So that way it's like no matter who is coming in here, only four people. If it's your immediate family, a couple friends at school, you only get four people for a game. I think that way like admin and security could monitor the door uh-huh. and it could really like you could have a season and keep it safe. That way it's not so many people in the gym. You could still socially distant. Tell me, man. See, I need to come highlight me. I got the ideas over here. Man. I got the <laughs> That's ideas over here. That's a good idea. Uh, it, it's for me, man. It's uh, like I said, I, w- I was telling you before we started recording. It's it's always a. Uh, Funny for me when I look at your Instagram and like uh-huh. see how much older you got and like show my wife and stuff <laughs> because I was uh I, right seeing yeah. you with big broad shoulders and facial hair and stuff because I was uh I've, I've said it on my Instagram before mm-hmm. but I was training you back in uh, like sixth grade yeah like from fifth I think to like seventh grade I think yeah you know what I'm saying when you was a, a chubby little dude always had the jump shot but you was <laughs> back a chubby when it was little workout dude. basketball right exactly see, a lot of people don't know about that back <laughs> in the workout basketball days that's for sure so uh, how like I said I met you in fifth grade and it seemed like uh-huh. you had been playing ball your whole life so is that kind of the story you've always been a basketball player yeah uh i mean i first started playing organized basketball when i was five mm-hmm. it's rec league uh in bringle terrace at vista and then my second year at that rec league my head coach uh vista panthers we went eight and zero in that league but my head coach was a coach for game point and that's when he brought me over when i was eight and that was third grade mm-hmm. but at the time game point didn't have a 10 u or an 8u team mm-hmm. so i had to play two years up and play 10u and mm-hmm. then i've been with game point the entire mm-hmm. rest and you of pretty time. much always played up since then too right for the uh, most part yeah and then 12u i did that twice so then i was only playing a year up but in my grade level right yeah right right yeah man like i said it was uh it was uh, it was it was crazy to watch you play back then man. <laughs> and it's um it's funny t- for me it, it's it's dope to see like the leader that you've become on the court because not that you weren't 
you weren't didn't want to be a leader, but mm-hmm. before you were, uh, I mean, I was about to be careful with my words, but yeah. everybody knows, everybody's known you for a long time. You'd be like emotional on the court, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? No. Things would get to you. Like no. I said, you'd always shoot, you always yeah. a score, always, always shared the ball, but it's, 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 it's great and it's dope to see somebody like you to grow from like being emotional on the court and let things get to you to mm-hmm. now, like, you're the leader. And when you see guys on the court, that letting things get to them and you're the one to go and pick yeah. them up and stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so you're, uh, like I said, it's your senior year. This is going to be your fourth year playing ball. Mm-hmm. You've completed three years and you got three CIF championship rings. Oh. How does that feel, man? Yeah, I know. I know you're a humble dude, and you don't really like put your stats on the table. But that's that's got to be a really dope feeling. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, just sometimes I just think back. Like, mm-hmm. I'm three for three right now. Mm-hmm. Like, regardless of division, I don't care. I've still got three rings. Right, right. And it's just like surreal to think about. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if we do have a season, I hope maybe open. I don't know. I'll mm-hmm. settle for a D1 because mm-hmm. that's still above what I was playing before. Right, right. But I mean, a title's a title. Hey, like I was about to say, man, a title is a title. You could, you could, you could split hairs if you want. And when when it comes down to like. I got like I kind of say this with, like with greatness or like with championships. You can split hairs if you want. Yeah. Like if if I have an open division championship and somebody has a D three, I'm gonna be like, well, bro, mine is open. And I, someone would have to understand the uh-huh. other person saying that. But if I got a championship, I'm like, fam, I'm a champ. Yeah. I don't. Exactly. I don't really care. I'm a champ. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you uh, had it. What what made? Sorry. When did you guys move to San Diego? Because like I said, you were playing in Vista. Actually, at Bringo yeah. Terrace, where I do my Friday morning mm-hmm. runs at, which is ironic. But you were you played. You were. I actually thought you were going to go to Vista High. Yeah. And so what 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 made you guys move to San Diego? Uh. Okay. So when we moved down here. I think it was 2007. We we're living in Vista, like on the border between Vista and San Marcos. Mm-hmm. And my mom, I think she was going to college in downtown, like post grad uh, for architecture. And my dad was working in Temecula. Mm -hmm. So I would go with my mom. Like, we would actually catch the train in elementary school. Uh, We would catch the train, and I'd go to school in Hillcrest. Uh, So, yeah. And then I, like, stayed in that school and then the feeder school into uh, Roosevelt, which is right next to the zoo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything that we were doing uh, was kind of, like, near San Diego in downtown area. So we just thought it would be easier on ourselves Mm -hmm. to move closer. So... Mm -hmm. In seventh grade, like right before seventh grade started, we moved to where we live right now, which is near downtown, and that's why I go where I go. I was about to say, was there ever any any thought about what high school you go to, or is it just I live over here, so I'm going to this school? Uh, I mean, when I lived in Vista, uh, I thought it was either going to be Vista, obviously, or I remember I had an aspiration to go to LCC. Okay. Because that's when I had my little white girl infatuation, <laughs> and that's why there is an LCC. So that's where, I, like, in I my mind, <laughs> uh, that's where I wanted to go. But then we moved to Escondido mm-hmm. in fifth grade, mm-hmm. and around there it was Orange Glen, Escondido, mm-hmm. and San Pasqual. Mm-hmm. And then finally, uh, when we moved to uh, San Diego, that's when, like, seventh grade, eighth grade, that's where we had to actually think about where I was going to go. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're religious. We're Jehovah's Witnesses. So that kind of put off saints or, like, all the good gotcha, uh, gotcha. religious like schools. the Christian schools, yeah. Yeah. And, like, around where I went, uh, there, like, there weren't many, like, good schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, no knock to any school around there. And also, I just wanted to be with my friends, you know? Like, obviously... <laughs> basketball player but like i like i've been with the same uh kids since kindergarten so like, i just wanted to stay with them for the last four years so That's i dope. decided to go to san diego high and the is program that i'm in is like one of the best academic uh, mm-hmm. programs on the west coast so mm-hmm. it just suited me dope dope and so uh you just coming coming off your junior year if i'm not mistaken you average you in the last like eight games, I want to say you probably had like five triple, like yeah, three, five, four or five triple doubles. Yeah, really killing. Like, and I, obviously, like I said, you have three rings, so you ended the year with a championship. Where did you? Uh, you guys played in the state tournament, right? Did uh, you? We lost in the first round. The f- okay, yeah. that's right. That's right. Who'd you guys? Who'd you guys play? Uh, Price from LA. Okay, is that is that a goal of yours, or are you kind of more just focused on CIF championships, or is that? Do you, do you think about state championships? Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously I do. Um, mm-hmm. If I'm gonna be completely honest, I feel like I kind of like. My best opportunity to win state was either my freshman year because we were in a lowest lower division. Mm-hmm. We ended up losing Santa Clarita Christian. They, like that was just some stupid. Um, they got really good over the summer mm-hmm. and they ended mm-hmm. up winning the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But then sophomore year, uh, we lost in the second round. I forget to who, but each year we kept on losing a round early than we did the prior. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, obviously, state would be like great, but considering the division we're in right now, I don't, I don't know if that mm-hmm. would happen. Mm-hmm. 
me. All right, I'm going to ask you this, bro, and I want right. you to be all the way real with me. All right, let's see. All right, so you've always, like I said, you've always been a standout. You've always been a starter. You have three rings. You've been league MVP of your league. You've been the team captain of your team for the last few years. And like I said, you have a resume, a legitimate resume. Do you feel like you get the respect you deserve in San Diego? Uh, I do. Okay. Um, I mean, like, regardless... I know you, regardless of who my dad is, I feel mm -hmm. like I do uh, get the respect that I deserve. Mm -hmm. Like, most people put me in conversations, like, for best in San Diego. Honestly, like, that's, that's kind of crazy for me to hear. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I just think there are, like, a lot of great kids, like, mm -hmm. in our county. And just, like, being in the conversation with all of them is just, like... I don't care if I'm the best. Or like, I know you don't yeah. care. I know I mean, that because I, I know you. I know it's not anything that keeps you up at night or yeah. anything that you think about. But I was just curious because I've yeah. always. I mean, maybe I could be a little biased because mm -hmm. you're fam to me. But I've always felt like now nah, he like they need to give him a little more props than he gets. How do, do you feel like you've always gotten it, or do you feel like you're getting it now? I feel like I'm. I've been getting it more recently, recently since okay. like committed and like what I've done in high school. Yeah, got you. Got you. Talking about committed, you just committed to Idaho State. Yep. Congratulations yep. on that, signed, man. Signed, yep. I know, signed, actually. I just committed, signed. That's a big deal. Congrats, man. Yeah, I know. It's I know it's been a, a goal of yours for a long time. Mm -hmm. And see, I was actually, I, I don't know if I was talking to my brother or who I was talking to, talking to. If I'm not mistaken, and see, like, recently I've been seeing the conversation, I feel like it's changed. Like, you mm -hmm. and your dad, I've been seeing more talks about, like, you wanting to be a pro. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but... When when I was training you and when mm -hmm. you were in elementary school, and of course you're elementary school, yeah. it's not you're, maybe maybe you're not thinking that, but if I'm not mistaken, the goal was Ivy League, no? Uh, yeah, that was just uh -huh. like putting my best foot forward, right, absolutely, out, outside of college. Mm -hmm. But like with all the Corona stuff that happened, uh, like there was just no live period, no opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, Seventeen U year, which is like the biggest year for right. all like AAU athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, there was none of that. So it was just kind of hard to get out in front of those colleges. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that would have been an aspiration, but, I mean, I'm happy where I'm at, so right. I'm not complaining. I was about to say, I don't want to make it like sound like you're ungrateful, yeah. but I I'm going to go ahead and ask, if not for COVID and all this stuff, would that mm -hmm. have been the plan to go Ivy League? Uh, or I'm, just where you're going to take the best opportunity? I was definitely going to take the best opportunity, like mm -hmm. what's best for me, my mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. after, high or after college, because, like, I'm still undecided on what I want to major in, so... That's going to be my next question. Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh I mean, if that's your next question, I'm kind of leaning towards music. Like, I've always been... Like, I love music. I play saxophone, piano, and violin. And I kind of want to get into, like, producing or sound engineering. Nice. Yeah. But, I mean, still, I don't know. Mm -hmm. The job security isn't that great, mm -hmm. as well as, like, financial security. So I'm not uh, entirely sure. I don't want to shoot down any dreams or anything uh -huh. like that but for me um i was undecided i actually started junior college undecided on mm -hmm. my major and because like i always played the drums in church yeah. growing up and I, I could play the piano by ear and i was always pretty musically i was writing music at the time mm -hmm. and so i decided to study music and my mom it's not that she didn't like it but I, she was happy that i was in school yeah but i could tell she wanted me to study something like more practical yeah if that makes sense and then she finally told me and i guess this is kind of my advice i'm giving to mm -hmm. you she finally told me in so many words like you like like dr dre doesn't have a music degree right you know what i'm saying yeah. like if you if you like dedicate yourself to that and really go hard and become great at it that's something you can do like without a yeah. degree so like i said if that's your love and I'm, uh -huh. I'm not trying to change your mind but it is something to think about like no, if there's definitely. something that you could major in that's possibly more practical yeah and then just do music on the side and keep grinding and get good at it then maybe maybe try that 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 would be yeah. my advice i mean i've talked with my parents they've said like maybe minor in music not mm -hmm. entirely like major and then mm -hmm. like maybe major in like business or something because mm -hmm. those go hand in hand and that's and that's essentially what i ended up doing i had, i switched over to major in music business i think with a minor in like music production uh -huh. yeah i think is what it was yeah and mm -hmm. idaho state they like like September, earlier September, they just created a new major. It's uh, something about the music industry, which is what I want to get into. Mm -hmm. And like, it's perfect for me. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll see what happens when I get there. I hear you. I hear yeah. you. And so with you, you signing D1, the goal always being, being to, to get a, a scholarship. Mm -hmm. um, and you're, you've always been talented, a talented basketball player, but you're not someone who like, you just walked on the court and you were always better than everyone mm -hmm. or like you could just wake up and you just had it. You're somebody who had to work at it with yeah. your God-given talent. So kind of like talk about 
the grind that it's been for you and like what what it's taken for you to get to this point? Uh, it's just like crazy to think about. Like even going into like freshman year, I was kind of more of like spot up shooter mm -hmm. or like I mean I was handling the ball, but I mean I was kind of like a little chubby, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. But I mean once that baby weight finally dropped, I was able to like build myself physically and like I started like being able to attack the basket more and like add on to my shooting abilities. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I mean it's just like crazy to think about where I am now compared to where I was like even going into freshman year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely cuz like I said not not even like me trying like you cuz I mean I feel like I did a solid job. You hit a, you hit a whole like another level. Yeah. And just I'm just being. I know that probably makes my training look away, but I mean I'm not training anymore, so I don't care. But yeah. you hit a whole another level, like, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe it's not just like oh leaving me, but like getting older, understanding the game more, yeah. being like more mature with your game and everything. And it was um, it was like interesting for me watching you play as a freshman because. Um, you don't always, and I'm sure like you would know this, like watching friends or watching mm -hmm. a loved one, maybe your sister and what she does. Um, but knowing how talented you are and knowing how much you understand the game, mm -hmm. but then still being a freshman playing yeah. varsity, making freshman mistakes. Yeah. I know I would, I would, <laughs> yeah. I would, I know. And it's like, just, just honest. I know I would catch myself like watching. I'm like, come on, AJ, yeah, you know I better know. than that. And then my, like, yeah, I remember me and uh, my brother, Steph, uh -huh. he's like, he's a bro. He's a freshman. Yeah. He's a freshman playing varsity, like playing heavy minutes yeah. as a freshman on varsity. I'm like, yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm like, he know better. He's like, bro, he's a freshman. Like yeah. he's going to bumps in the road. Like it's how it is. Yeah. I remember. Uh, I mean, the game that sticks out to me is close to the mic. I'm off. The game that sticks out to me is uh, we played UC my freshman year, mm -hmm. and I had like our first eight points of the game, and I don't think I scored a single point the rest of the I game. I was at that game. Yeah, I was at that game. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's also like a matter of like I'm younger than everyone else in my grade, mm -hmm. so like in middle school, uh, like I would be two years younger than all the kids that I was playing against uh, on game point, like. Mm -hmm. And then freshman year, I was, like, just turned 14 as a freshman. So mm -hmm. even though I was a freshman, I was still, like, younger than most of the guys. Right, so, right. like, what I'm doing now just comes with, like, maturing, getting older. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do have you – did you have any freshmen on your team last year? Uh, last year? Yeah, there was this kid, Miles Harris. Uh, he actually started for us. That's right. Yeah, That's towards right. the end of the year. That's right. I mean, with, like, slight chances, like, everyone – Someone got, people Yeah, got people got hurt and stuff, and stuff right. like that. But, I mean, he started producing uh, on varsity. So, mm -hmm. like, he obviously made his freshman mistakes. But, I mean, I was able to talk to him. Like, That's what I was going to say. So. How, how kind of was that being, like, bro, I've been there before. Like, yeah. Were you guys able to bond over that at all or not really so much? I mean, not as much as you think. But, like, mm -hmm. Miles, my dude, I literally live, like, two blocks from him. Okay. And, like, I remember, I think it was Canyon Crest. We were up, like, three points with, like, a few minutes ago, and he, like, missed, like, the front end of a one and one and he was, like, beating himself over it. And then he, like, got fouled again, was going to the free throw line. I was able to talk to him, and he made both those free throws. So, mm -hmm. like, it's just, like, he's my little bro. So that's how I see him, yeah. That's dope. That's dope. And so, uh, I mean, you're going to, regardless of whether, whether there's a season or not, you're going to be working on your game and getting ready for college. Mm -hmm. um, have you, um, for, oh, let me ask this first. How did the, um, how long had you been talking to Idaho State? Uh, Idaho State, they offered me, over a year ago. It was like okay. August, late August, I think, after the NCAA camp uh, at GCU. They had seen me uh, They had seen me there. I thought I played like crap that camp, honestly, but I mean, they saw something that I didn't see. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I think it was the day after our tournament at Ladera in Irvine, I was like working out with, um, like, with one of my coaches at San Diego, and I get a phone call, so I step outside, and it was Coach Looney. And, like, I don't think I'd ever talked to him before. It was like, yeah, we like what we saw. And, like, they just offered me on the spot. I was so geek, like, excited to run around the gym. I bet. Yeah. And, I mean, they've just been loyal. Like, loyalty is a big thing of mine. Mm -hmm. I've played with Game Point for nine years now. And, like, they've stuck with me through the ups and downs over a year. Like, mm -hmm. I committed a year after, over a year after they uh, offered me. And, like, they saw something, and they still hold true to what they see. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's what's up. Have you been to Idaho before? Uh, Yeah. we like for, like, for a game, or have you spent time? Uh, um, so, I think it was in September, mm -hmm. uh, NCAA, they, like, just uh, made the rule that you can't, like, no official or unofficial visits. Mm -hmm. So, we went on an academic visit. We drove up uh, money out of our own pocket, and just, like, took an academic tour, housing tour, 
And I mean, if I'm gonna be completely honest, like the town is kind of lackluster, campus mm-hmm. is lackluster. But I mean, I love what they're doing with the program. Like mm-hmm. they they're looking like they're gonna make a big turnaround, and mm-hmm. they see me as a big part of that. So Dope. that's why I, no, that's, that's why I decided. Like, have you talked to the coach about like your playing time freshman year? Like you're gonna be starting like six man? Like what's that? Do you know any of that yet? I mean, yeah, like everything. Nothing's guaranteed, right, but they right, see right. me as like a big part. There's shoot, I'm forgetting his name. But he's a junior right now. He's going to be a senior, and they're seeing him as a mentor for me. He just transferred from a junior college, I believe. And he's, like, playing the same position I am. Mm-hmm. And they just see him as mentoring me uh, my first year. Mm-hmm. And whatever happens after that happens. Okay. I, can, I was going to say Idaho seems like more your – I wouldn't know. I've never been to mm-hmm. Idaho. But just knowing what I know of you, you're not somebody who's, like, from what I know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm, yeah. Group, but from what I know, you're not you don't strike me and I don't you don't seem to be like the kid that's like looking for like the party and looking for the turn up and looking for all of course you go out yeah. and have fun, but you don't seem like the type that's like dying to do all of that. And I mean and I don't it doesn't seem to be very much of that in Idaho. With yeah. all due respect. <laughs> no, Idaho. like it's funny because I actually asked that on the housing tour. I asked our tour uh guide, I was like, So are there any is there a frat life here? There is zero frat life uh, because, like, it's a heavily Mormon, like, Mm-mm. city. Mm-hmm. So they actually have, like, a law in the city or something like that that says you can't have uh, more than three people with different last names under the same house. So that basically eliminates all frat houses. Like, it's basically a leap. It's so crazy. There's one, like, Christian frat house, but that's it. So what? Yeah, I know. Like, that's what she told me. So there's no frat life, so. And this is, like, for the dorms? That's the a dorm rule? Uh, no, like, it's, like, a city rule. Like, there's wow. you can't live with any, like, more than three wow. people with different last names. Yeah. Wow. It's really crazy. I've, I've never thought, heard yeah, of something I've like that. I've heard it all now. Yeah. But, I mean, it's kind of a perfect storm because, I mean, it's all I can focus on is, is grades mm-hmm. and getting better. That's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. That's kind of what I was getting at. So that's cool. That's cool. I mean, like, like I said, you're still in high school now. You haven't even yeah. played a college game, but... What's um, have you? Do you think much about professional basketball? And I, like I said, I know yeah. that's the goal. But do you uh-huh. think much about it right now? Or are you kind of just thinking next step from here? This the next step. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, pro- professional has always been the goal. Mm-hmm. NBA is aspiration for every like just basketball player growing up. But I mean, whatever happens, happens. I just got to do what I got to do. Mm-hmm. So I just take it one step at a time. Mm-hmm. I hear you, man. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you uh, for uh, returning after that awkward break. I appreciate it. <laughs> but we're back. Still got my guy, AJ Bergen, here, man. We uh here having a great conversation, just having some fun. I got uh, just a few, a few more questions for AJ, yep. man. It's stuff that I definitely wanted to ask before the break, but we're going to get uh-huh. them off now. Um, who... um. Who do you think you play like and or who do you um like who have you kind of modeled your game after, if anyone at all? Uh growing up, I remember my dad used to call me Andre Miller with a jump shot. It's kind of a heavy set player, mm-hmm. like that uses like his physical abilities to just get to the basket and just like lay the ball in the hoop. But now I'm not so sure. Like mm-hmm. I don't honest if I'm being completely honest, I don't really like pay attention to like mm-hmm. stuff that's like outside of like my vision, you know. Okay. But I mean So I was gonna ask if yeah. you could play like anybody, who would you play, play like, like anyone? Because I weird I was just watching highlights the other day when I was doing my podcast uh-huh. and I was like, Man, if I could play like Kyrie, the only thing he don't have is he don't dunk on people. <laughs> yeah. But if like if Kyrie dunked on people, I mean like be uh-huh. I'd play like him for sure. <laughs> so like if you could play like anybody, who if who I would you could play like? Play like anyone. Mm, probably Dame Lillard. Yep, I'm yeah. not mad at that. That's my favorite player. I'm yeah. not mad at that. Okay. I mean, also there's also James Harden. Mm-hmm. I mean, number 13. Right, right, right. But, I mean, if I could, like, take anything from any, like, NBA player, just anyone with athleticism, bro. Mm-hmm. Just, like, <laughs> super above the rim. Right. So I feel like that's, like, the one thing I need the most mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. It's definitely getting better. For sure. But, I mean, like, that's what I want the most. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I know you told me you play a few instruments, but, like, what, mm-hmm. what are some of your uh, some of your hobbies outside of basketball? I know you, you train all the time. You all you all always on the schoolwork, but yeah. like outside of that, to just kind of release and kind of be free. What, what what's some of your hobbies? Okay, so like I got a keyboard at home, play that, try mm-hmm. to learn uh, like a lot of songs. Mm-hmm. But I mean, something some people think it's weird, but I love origami. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is different. Yeah, mm-hmm. my aunt. It was either my aunt or grandma. And like close sec- to the mic, bro. It was either like my aunt mm-hmm. or grandma in mm-hmm. like second grade. Um, we went to Barnes and Noble. She came down to visit. 
And she said to me and my cousins that we can get any one thing from the store. And me being the nerd I am, I got an origami book. And I, like, memorized all of them. And, like, now I just, like, off YouTube, just learn a bunch. I never so, would have thought that. Yeah, I know. But, like, I can make some crazy stuff. Like, I made a horse. Mm -hmm. uh, the rat, Remy from Ratatouille. Okay. Like, with a chef hat, I know how to make that. It's just, like, not the basic, like, crane stuff. It's just, like, weird stuff that you wouldn't even think of. Mm -hmm. And you said uh, with, with the keyboard. So you you read mm -hmm. music? Uh, Yeah, more so with the saxophone just because, like, keyboard or piano or whatever. You got the bass and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all that. So saxophone, yeah. Uh, I haven't honestly I haven't picked up a saxophone since sophomore year though. So okay. it's it's been a minute. But I mean I could still read music, yeah. That's one thing I wish I could do, man. I was always cocky with it. I could play the piano by ear. I uh -huh. could sit with any song for like thirty minutes to an hour and I could figure it out. I, was uh -huh. like, I don't need to learn how to read music. <laughs> and now that I don't have the time to yeah. sit with a song for an hour, I wish I could just put the music there and just play yeah, it. I really I wish I stuck with that. I mean, only thing that's helping me is that sophomore year I took AP music theory. Mm -hmm. And like okay. it's like one of the hardest AP tests, but I mean I learned how to like read music, like understand intervals, like all this crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. I got a two on that test. Yeah. But I mean it's one of, it had like a thirty percent pass rate. So mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. two's close enough to a three for me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. And see for me, um like I said, I studied music my first uh my when I first uh started junior college and I took a keyboarding class, a piano uh -huh. keyboarding class. Um and I just it just wasn't it wasn't fun enough for me to uh -huh. like to sit there. And it wasn't like something that was mandatory for my major. If it was something that I had to have, then yeah. I would have just toughed it out and stayed. But I was like, nah, I feel this it. lady's kind of boring. <laughs> I can already do this. It just, I, I do it the long way. Yeah. I'm, I'm out. Like, I'm, yeah. I might end up dropping the class. But I wish I stuck with it, man. Nah. I really wish I stuck with it. Um, I might have you make some friends mad on this question, bro. Okay. If you could, if you could put together a starting five with, you know what, let's do, now nah, it might take too long. If we have time, we'll do All 10. Right. But let's start All with right. a starting, starting, five five. starting five with uh, just the, the high school basketball players in San Diego right now. Not nobody that's left. People that are still right. currently, like, are going to be on a, a San Diego high school basketball roster this coming season. All right. So four, like, including me? Five including me? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So it would be me. You know what? Let's keep yeah. you out because I, okay. I know you would All pick right. yourself. All let's right. keep All you right. out. Uh, so at point guard, I'd have Chris Howell. Crazy passer. Mm -hmm. Like, I've known him since, like, like at you, mm -hmm. I tried out for Coastal. I remember like mm -hmm. when I was eight years old, and he was there. He's always been like one of the best passers I know, mm -hmm. and he's also like locked down defender. Mm -hmm. Except for when he got dropped uh, first <laughs> year at Kermit the County, never forget that. But <laughs> but nah, Chris Howell definitely. Oh yeah, he, he and, could hoop. I love his game. Yeah, he was he was one of my top five. He yeah, was one of my top five. Uh, big man, uh, my guy Dylan Wilhite from Cathedral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, really solid. Straight fundamentals and like when he's on in practice, like no one can stop him. We're just mm -hmm. feeding the ball. That's two. Mm -hmm. How to think? Uh, Keaton Smith from Santa Fe Christian. Okay, my guy since uh, eleven U. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a better shooter than me. Mm -hmm. Like he's just crazy. Some of the stuff he does. That's three. Uh, fourth, I need some athletic wing. So either. Obina or Alex Crawford, one of those two, just someone to stretch the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to pick Obina in that one. And then, let's see. What do I need? Huh. You got you got enough shooting already? You need a shooter? Uh, I'm, a, I'm thinking about one more shooter. I was going to shoot. I'm, like, blanking right now. I haven't really, like, thought of any question like this. Uh... I mean, AJ Bergen. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad at yeah. that. I'm not mad at that at all. I'm not mad at that yeah. at all. I, I said you couldn't pick yourself. Yeah, I was, no, I was no. I'm not mad at it. You could pick yourself. I'm not mad at that. But like, I, I, that was all the questions I have for you, man. Mm -hmm. that was, this was a fun interview, man. Yeah, I'm glad you came. Sure. I learned, I, like I said, I knew a lot about you already, but I learned some more stuff about you. Yeah. Man. I'm definitely glad you came in, man. And I, and I, and I hit you last minute. Yeah. You're, you're somebody that... Um, I'm going to just be real. I've wanted, to, I've wanted to have on the show since I've had mm -hmm. a, this show, but... Um, like I said, I'm gonna just be real. I I hesitated and I waited long to ask you because I know people know that we know each other. Yeah. And even though like I've had like like I know y'all seen like Ryan Rizuki's a friend yeah. of mine, but it was just I don't know maybe because of how far we I don't know. I just wanted to be like careful. Like oh, he just had him on the show because that's his boy. <laughs> like I just I was just trying to be careful with that. Nah, but I, I I've been it. I've been wanting you on the show, bro. I, I appreciate you coming yep. and talking with me, man. Of course. That was all. That's all. Uh, that's all we got going on today on, on the Michael Michael Flicks. I appreciate yes, everybody tuning in, man. This is uh. 
this uh, every Saturday morning on WS Radio at 11 a.m. and every Sunday morning on the Flix Media Network YouTube channel, man. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, man. I'm trying to get to 100. I'm at like 77. <laughs> Help me out, man. I appreciate y'all. We out. Listen to your heart, baby.